Hello and welcome to another edition of Sunday School. We missed you so much. We look forward to seeing you back in the building here soon. But until then, let's go and get it started with a word of prayer. God, we do indeed thank you for yet another day to study your word, to be about your word. <clears throat> God, we ask you that you would have your way on today. Pray to teach your word, God, that you would hide me behind the cross. That they see none of me, but they see all of you. Be still careful to give you honor, glory, and praise. Amen. <clears throat> let's go ahead and get started. Today, <coughs> excuse me. <clears throat> By the end of this lesson, students will be able to share the experience of God delivering them through hard times <clears throat> and be thankful for God's everlasting, unconditional love. <clears throat> Have you ever thought about a song that allowed you to think about what God has brought you from, <clears throat> what you've been through, what you've been doing, or what have you done? Think about a song that you can really think back how God just brought you <clears throat> from another place to another place to where you need to be, such as like, God kept me <clears throat> and he wouldn't let me go. That's something we're going to talk about today, how things can be, help you through songs of what you had to go through in life. But let's get started with a story. I'll share this with you. It's called Chained by Drug Addiction. The addiction started with, pain, with a painkiller. Tim played football in college and was passionate about the game. He hoped one day to make it to the pros and, to, and that pushed him to play hard. But the work has also resulted in him getting a second concussion with his head throbbing after a regular checkup and a CT scan, he was given a pangolin with three free refills. After he ref his refills were used up the door, the doctor would not give Tim another prescription. Tim panicked. He still craved the painkiller. He started asking relatives for leftover prescriptions. When that was no longer an option, he found a way to purchase illegal prescriptions. He had, enough, he had enough money to cover it for a while, but then started to steal from his parents. He felt chained to his drugs. Heroin was cheaper than his prescription, so Tim started to use, use it instead. When he blanked out one day and his parents found him, he knew it was that time to be free, to be free from drugs. Tim and his parents found a Christian-based treatment center. At the center, he was able to use his faith in God. Word and support of the believers who also struggled to escape from, from the hook of drugs. Tim was there for several months and had been sober for more than a year. It wasn't as easy an easy decision, but Tim decided to give up football. Being delivered from the addiction to drugs, he was more, far more important to him than an addiction to his game. He was finally free. That is an interesting story right there because... He ended up getting a, he worked, he worked so hard to be a good football player, to work hard in school and college, and also he wanted to get to the pros, but he, he suffered a second concussion, which has caused him to lead him to uh, a painkiller that he got addicted to. And then what got him to realize what really was happening, he had to, he blanked out. He knew something was wrong. He was stealing from his parents. <laughs> prescription from his from his relatives and also he, was, he was started purchasing prescription and start doing heroin let me ask you some questions a real question do you know anyone who has managed to overcome a drug addiction through relying on their faith I can remember when I was uh, growing up well as an adult went to school to high school one of my high school teammates uh, very good athlete worked hard at what they do end up getting uh, hooked on drugs because he was depressed. He got hurt as well, and he began to use drugs. And at one time, I think it took it was um, I think an oldest uh, person talked to him about about Jesus Christ. You know, do you know Jesus, know Jesus Christ, your personal Savior? And right then and there, he ended up getting hooked on Jesus. What a wonderful thing to get hooked on is Jesus. That's that's a great addiction to be on. Uh, I had that experience of talking to this individual, and we today we still talk about you know goodness of Jesus and what He's done for all of us. And that's one thing I learned to just lean on him to and always talk to people. Sometimes you have to be a great listener sometimes to hear what they're saying, what they're talking about. But let me share a combined thought with you. One of, one, one of the combined thoughts I'm going to talk about, praise the Lord. Psalms 107, 1 through 3, it's, it starts with the psalm begins with an uh, admiration to everyone to give thanks and praise. The psalm extends in the invitation for all who have been redeemed to give thanks. The reason behind such a praise break there. They had, there was a flashback. People have flashbacks sometimes, what God has brought them through, what they've been through, what they're going through today. 
Because whenever you think of the, about the goodness of Jesus and all he's done, you just begin to think, God has brought me through this. God got me through this. Got me through my situations and my trials and tribulations. But the, somehow you still st you still in it because you're going through some stuff at the at the present time. How so? Also, God has His steadfast loves and doers forever. Here you discover within the text is the Israelites have been in has been in, been in the enemy says Babylon territory. Uh, after a while, God restores them after going through a lot of adversity and waiting for a breakthrough. The psalmist had, uh, uh, indicates that the Israelites had had enough and they would have offered thanks. And then they witnessed God witnessed that had witnessed that God made a way for them, got them out of the type of bondage that they were in. See, the psalmist always broke it down this way. That's something you have to really think about when you start thinking about God. You start thinking about how can I praise the Lord because... When he bring you through some, your situation that you've been through some stuff, addictions, it don't have to be drugs, that addiction or, uh, or watching television or treating people a different way. Sometimes people think addiction is always related to drugs or alcohol. It's how you treat people in life. God don't want, God don't treat us no, 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 in no demeaning uh, manner that, that calls us to, to belittle us. God doesn't do that. He has that, that, un, his un, that unconditional love. Let me share a question with you. Why must we learn to all, how do we learn or always learn to give thanks to God regardless of our situation? How do we do that? I would tell people, think about where you came from, where you are, when you were first born, when you became, you was in middle school, you're not that you're in high school, you're preparing to go to college. It's about a mature thing. You're maturing to learn how to love people a certain way and learning about God and how he, he oversees what we're doing in life. And he also gives us the mindset also help teaches us what we need to be doing, how we should be living. But God's in favor and love is always special. Also, can you think of a situation when you experience a thankful situation in a thankful manner where you just I had to thank God for what He's done for me? I can retire, recall when <clears throat> I was I was in college and I was coming home. I'd been hanging out with my friends and I fell asleep at the wheel. But somehow God woke me up right before that car went off the edge. I was just very thankful. And I, I would always tell people that story because I, I was so I was so thankful that God kept me and he held me close and it, it seemed to folks and he wouldn't let me go. It's all, it's always something to think about. Also when I got through college when I was taking tests and I knew I didn't do the best, I thought I didn't do the best, but God saw me through I had enough information and knowledge to get through the situation. The second thing, uh we're talking about the second love in action. That's in Psalms in verses four and nine. The psalmist takes takes us on a on a on a journey to dis display God's love. He's showing us how God really loves us. He's showing us how God can love you, how He can love you, how you can also love as well. The psalmist first highlights God's goodness to a group of weary wanderers crossing through the desert. He was showing them was we got people coming. Who, who working hard and God trying to lead them down the right path in the right, the right direction. They began to utter a prayer to the Lord. They cried out to the Lord. Have you ever had to cry out to the Lord? Lord, I mean, I'm in need of some help. Something's going on. I just need your help right now. I, I need help because I don't know which way to turn, but I do know I can still call on your name regardless of the middle. Because your love is unfavoring. It's unconditional. We can always lean on you. But then he says here, God, he provided them with a direct, route to a safe place within the city where they could settle. God was good to them. He provided a shelter for them. He provided a route for them to take. He God gave them a navigation. He gave them a, a road map, a map quest to get to where they needed to be to safe destination. God let there's um he knows what we need. He knows what we're going through, where we're trying to go to. But sometimes we have to adhere, we have to hear what the Lord is saying to us in order to to Get on the journey to, to go where we need to be going. Then we see God, the, God had this steadfast love, his wonderful deeds towards them. He saw them. He knew what was going on. He knew what they needed to do. He was trying to get them where he needed them, so he provided a direct path, a, a route for them to get there. Are that all right? Well, that means your question. That leads me to another question. How do we show God we love him through our actions? How do we show God we love him through our actions? One thing I always tell people, all your heart has to be right. When your heart right, everything else to be right. You learn to love people. 
the way they are. Show God that you love him by praising God, praying to God daily, not when something goes wrong and when you want something. You know, I would tell God, look, you, you, if you don't do anything for me, you already done enough. My job is to continue to praise you, exalt your name, shabak your name, give you honor and give you glory. Gird up, keep that word inside of me. Continue to love you and love other people as you love us. We have to love each other. And that love is, and we have to be unconditional love. That's how you show God uh, that I love the action. You know, put your love in action. Show them what you're doing. Just not talking. We have a lot of people who like to talk about it. I love you, I love you. But show people that you love them. Let them know that you love them just by doing, just by showing up and supporting them. The third thing I want to talk to you about, recognizing God's steadfast love. Verses 39 and 43, uh, here the psalmist concentrates on the angle of God's providence. Those who are raised deep, deep those who rise are, are humble, God will honor that. Let me have this live. Equally, God loves everybody equally. He really does. But there, here you have to be, make sure that you love, your love in your heart is right. You're loving people the way they should be loved. That's why I say that steadfast, recognize God's steadfast love. That's that unconditional love. You can't replace unconditional love. I'm going to love you through the thick and the thin. Although we've been through some stuff or going through, God still loves us. No matter what it may look like. But see, there's an example here. One of God's divine providence that he does this to convince the wise to heed a reply of him. His steadfast love is for all who are willing to rely upon him. Repeatedly call on him and abide in him. You got to learn. Listen, we got to learn to lean on God. More and more each and every day, especially during the pandemic or what we, we that God has showed us that He still loves us. We still here, we still live, we still we got food on the table, we still got shelter, we still in our right mind. Blood still running warm through our veins. God still loves us. He's thought enough, He loves us, y'all. He's un, it's unfavoring, unconditional love. It's always important. Well, in what way has God shown his steadfast love in your life? Hmm. I can think of it right now. He's brought us through. God has us right where he wants us. We got to stay on our bending knees. We got to stay prayed up. We got to continue to pray that God deliver us from anything that's unlike him. Make sure, Lord, we want to love the way God loves us. Unconditional, steadfast love that no man or no woman can shake from us. We, he wanna, God, we want to continue to love each other unconditionally. Love, continue to pray for each other. Be for help, support each other. That's the love God is talking about. We must be ready to hang on and be a good courage because God loves us. He loves us more than we ever know. As I tell people, don't love is a word that we use kind of loosely. Love is action. Love isn't about telling, hey, I love you, I love you. Love is about action. It can be gifts and everything, but God, but it's love is action. Show me that you love me. We have to learn it. So when, you go, when you're in school going through stuff and some situations pop, tends to go on, it happens in your life. Man, I people say, man, God loves you and so do I. And I believe God does love doing it. How do we love people? By showing people that we love them. Our actions should line up with our words. And words should line up with our actions. And that's how you show the, God, the action of God's love. Recognize that God loves us. I share a story with you. But that's why I like here. In the story here, Tim was going through some stuff. His parents could have easily said, no, we don't want anything to do with you. They could have. But they stuck with Tim. Tim knew Tim had a situation. He had a concussion, and he got hooked on some painkillers. And it prompted him to continue to take the pills, and he got hooked on them. He, got, he, he had an addiction because he didn't know he was used to the pills to how it making him feel. He was trying to get better as he got through. Let me take these pills so I can get better, get back on his football field. But he made it to where he had he, he had an addiction that caused him a relapse, a lapse to where he depended on more, he depended on the drugs. But then I mean, he had, had to have a prayer mother and father. They prayed for him. I know they did pray for him. Put him in a Christian best treatment center. They helped him alone. His faith kept, probably called him every day, putting scriptures in his, in his heart, in his head. 
you know, no weapon formed against me shall prosper. No weapon. By his stripes I'm healed. That's love, y'all. You keep giving people positive stuff, not being negative. Stay positive. But I like his parents stuck with him. They found him and said, we got to take care of our baby. We love him. We're going to show that we love him. They showed him. Not, they didn't tell him. They showed him. We love you. Unconditional love. We're going to get you through this. And we're going to put you in the place where they're going to make sure you take care. And we're going to continue to pray for you all at the same time. That's love. God wants to love each other. Unconditional. Regardless of what we may be going through. He's going to want us to love each other. Well, I hope you've been blessed. That's my time. Just remember, you can do anything through Christ that strengthens you. Continue to love each other unconditionally, be a, help each other, support each other. Until next time, God loves you, and so do I.